Hi, it's Rob from the Russian Bulkum. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint the shield captain from the Indomitus box set. So the first colour we're going to use is Vallejo Black. I'm going to do this to do the helmet and the armour trim. I'm also going to do the edge of the shield, the trim on the shield, black as well. I don't know if you're lucky enough to get a copy of Indomitus, but the miniatures in it are absolutely superb. So there's going to be quite a few of those getting painted up over the next few weeks. So we'll do plenty of the Marines, plenty of the Necrons, and intersperse that with a bit of Age of Sigma. But this is being painted up as Knights of the Chalice chapter, which is a Blood Angel successor. So now I'm going to start working on Retributor Armour. So the Knights of the Chalice, as I say, Blood Angel successor, and their main colours are the similar kind of colours to the Blood Angels, but with the black armour trim and the black helmet as well. Also the chest eagle. So it does make them look a little bit different to the Blood Angels, maybe not quite as bright in colour, but still with all the same kind of company and battle line markings and that kind of thing. I'm going to use a little bit of full grade copper. I'm going to use this to do the kind of halo around the skeletal head. I'm also going to use it on as a little box hanging from his belt. I'm also going to paint that with it. I think it's hanging from the rosaries actually. So quite a long video this because it is such a detailed model but it's worth putting in the time and the effort for it because it is absolutely stunning. Lots of amazing details on it as well. This is good to paint up. So with the copper finished, we're now going to move on to Citadel Rakarth Flesh. This is going to be to do the bones of the skeleton and all of the parchments. And there's a lot of parchments on there. You've got purity seals, you've got big scrolls, a little bit of scroll work on his shoulder, which I don't really paint up until the end, but on his right shoulder pauldron, you want to use a bit of Rakarth Flesh to do that little bit of scroll work underneath the eagle there. I'm going to give it a nice even layer of Rakarth flesh. Now, once we've shaded it, we'll be building them up in different colours just to separate them so they do look quite different. Also doing the robes with the Rakarth flesh. So with all that colour done, now I'm going to move on to Vallejo Model Air Chrome. We're going to be using this to paint the blade of his sword. We're also going to be using it to paint the rosaries, which he's got around his hand and also around his waist. a particular figure from Indomitus you want to see painted up next or over the next few weeks I should say because I planned out the next one just shout out in the comments because I want to try and paint up quite a few of them so depending on what everyone reckons I might paint up a few of them in different orders but if there's anything particular that you want to see just give us a shout so now I'm going to use Vallejo Panzerace's flesh base to do the little bits of skin around his eyes now I'll use this colour it's pretty much the same as Cadian Flesh Tone, so if you've got the Games Workshop colours, use Cadian Flesh Tone. It's just as good a colour, I just picked the Vallejo one out of, out of habit, because I do quite like using it. So whichever Flesh Tone you're going for, use that on his eyes, and then we can move on to the next one. Now I'm going to use Citadel Mournfang Brown. This is going to be for the handle on his shield, his sword, his belt, and also his holster, which is around the back. The miniature itself has been sprayed with Halford's Red Primer. Now it's an interesting colour to paint over because it isn't 100% smooth I don't think. But it works fine for me. I've used it quite often with red miniatures. And I've had too much of an issue with it. But I would say probably maybe the Citadel Mephiston Red Spray is a little bit better for painting up the armour. It's probably a little bit smoother. So now we're going to be using some Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey to do the base. Just want to give this a nice even coat of the Mechanica Standard Grey. Work that into the base. This is a miniature which is possibly a bit easier to put together, or rather to paint, 
before you've put it together. If there is quite a few bits that are hidden. You can paint most of it that you can see clearly, so it's not too bad. But if you're watching this before you've put them together, maybe worth leaving that shield off so you can reach around them. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel and the Fist on red. And this is just going to be to paint up all his armour to get it the right shade of red when we put on the shades. I don't know if you follow us on Instagram, I took a photo of it and posted it up before and after the shades. So once we finished a couple more layers, I took a few photos and posted up a half and half with shaded and unshaded. So you can see the difference and the difference with the shades really is pretty good. It's nice to see how the details come out and show up a lot more. So now we've moved on to Citadel Corn Red, which I haven't shown here. We're just using the corn red to do all of the purity seals. This again, like the scroll work, it's another way of making the colours a little bit different so you can have a red but without it being too similar to the armour so it still stands out, looks different. Now we're going to be using one of the new colours that came out this weekend, which is Citadel Rune Lord Brass. It's a superb colour, this. Goes on really well. Doesn't seem to streak too much either, which is nice. And it does look really cool on Necrons too. So if you haven't got this and you are doing the Necrons, I'd recommend it for painting them up. Because the colour does work really, really well on the armour. And literally the Necron had been painted chrome, but that's much of a muchness. Painted chrome, paint on the armour, and we're going to contrast the actual bits in between the armour plates. So first up we're going to be using Citadel Nuln Oil. We're going to be using this on the rosaries and on the blade of his sword. Also on the base as well you want to be using Nuln Oil to shade between the stones, all the gravelly bits. Now a really quick bit, a little bit of Reichland Flesh Shade just to do by his eyes. Now it's Citadel Seraphim Sepia. Can be using this to do all of the bones, the robes and the scroll work. And once you've finished this, it does look like it'll all end up the same colour. By building up different coloured layers on it. Using different colours mixed with Rakar Flesh, you can get them all to look different, but while maintaining that same similar kind of colour. So you want to give a nice layer of this, try not to let it pull too much at the bottom of the robes, because it can be a little tricky to blend that in, but if there's a, a little bit of a pool there, that doesn't matter too much. So now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Agrax Air Shade, and this is going to be used to do all of the gold. We're not going to be using this on the Necron, so it's just all of the gold and also all of the Mournfang brown. And once you've finished the Grax Air Shade, we can move on to the next colour. Which is going to be... Citadel Carrowbird Crimson. We're going to use the Carrowbird Crimson to do all of the purity seals, like the little wax parts of them. So give them a good layer so you've got the details standing out in them. Like so. Next up we're going to be using some Citadel Black Templar Contrast. We're going to be using this on the Silver Metallics on the Necron. I was looking at the pictures of the Necrons and how they're set up and painted on the workshop site. And this looks to me to be a pretty quick and easy way of doing it. Still get the details of the metallic showing through. 
whilst also darkening it right down. So I'll probably give another layer of Black Templar a little bit later on just to darken that up. Once you finish that, we can move on to the next colour. Next colour is going to be Cryptek Armour Shade Gloss. And this is the new shade that Citadel brought out at the weekend with the Indomitus box. It is a really, really nice shade to use. Don't tend to use a lot of gloss shades. They have the Nolan Oil gloss, but tend to prefer the matte version of it. But this really does look good once you paint it onto the miniature. We're just painting this onto the Rune Lord brass parts of the Necron. Once you've got a nice layer on there, we can move on to the next one. Next we're going to be using Citadel Druchy Violet. And it's going to be to do all of the red on the armour and the shield. I do love using Druchy Violet on the red armour and red cloaks and that kind of thing. It's dark enough to go into the recesses, give you a nice shade there. But also, the red will go over it with no problems. On the areas where there isn't too much area to shade, there's not many recesses, you can just put it over the recessed area. You don't need to coat the whole thing in it. But once done, we can start working on the colours. First colour we're going to use is Citadel with Fist on Red. I'm going to start reapplying the colour to the armour first. So you want to give a nice coat into this, nice smooth red. You want to be making sure that you leave shaded areas, sort of on the underside of the arms, on the underside of the legs. You don't want to be going all the way around with the colour, just to give that the effect of a shadow. You can leave the shade in the recesses, just so the details stand out a lot more. But you want to get a nice smooth coat of red on that. Next up we're going to be using some Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet to highlight the red. You want to be thinking about where the light is catching the armour. Just painting it onto those areas if you have a look from the top of the model, look down. That's to how I roughly work out where the light is going to be and where you're going to put the highlights. Nice picture of some of the other Indomitus models behind you there. So when you're doing halfway down the arm and things, you want to be doing about 50% of the arm with the Evil Sun Scarlet. And once you've finished highlighting all that, we can move on to the next colour. Next one we're going to use is Citadel Wild Rider Red. I'm going to use this to do all the highlights along the edges. Again, I only highlight the edges where the light is going to catch it. I don't highlight the underside edges, just the top edges of everything. You can also do a little bit more of a highlight on the areas that would be catching more light, sort of on the top of the arm there, you probably do about a quarter of the top of the arm with this colour. But for the areas that don't catch too much light, you just use it to do the edge highlights. So now we're moving on to Citadel Retributor Armour. I'm going to start reapplying colour to all that gold. There is loads and loads of gold on this miniature. It does stand out quite well once he's painted. So again, thinking about where the light's going to be coming from. You're not going to be highlighting the underside of the gold areas, mainly just the top edges and the sides, just to bring that colour back to it. We're going to highlight the gold using Citadel Liberator Armour. This is where you start thinking about where the light's going to be catching it and doing those highlighted edges with that. So you're catching the tops of all the little bolts or little spikes, any edges that might be catching the light, you want to think about that too. With that highlight finished, we're now going to have a quick spin around of the model. We're going to add a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome to the Liberator Gold and start highlighting all the top edges of the gold. 
It's going to be trying to highlight. So you can see that the halo going around the top has quite a square edge to it. Sort of like a, almost like a rectangle curving around the head. So those top edges, at the very top of the halo, you're going to highlight those. And then where the halo call comes round down as it would be going underneath the head, you want to be highlighting the top edges of those two. Now we're going to move on to Rakarth Flesh. Now there's loads to add on for this. So we're going to be doing the skeleton, the scrolls and the robes. You want to think about where the light is going to catch these things and where you're going to leave the shade in the recesses. It's really apparent on the, the skeleton where to do that. With the scrolls, when you look at the scrolls, you'll see like little kinks in them, so I always leave a little bit of shade underneath any of the little ridges there. And highlight the top parts of those. Once you've finished off all of the Rakar flesh, we'll come back and we'll start doing one of the specific pieces and highlighting that. So we're going to start off by doing the skeleton. So we'll be using Citadel Ushabti Bone. And you'll be given a nice layer of this to all the raised areas on the skeleton. I'll be doing quite a good layer of this. You're changing the base coat of Rakarth flesh and the colour of that so that it stands out and is different from the scrolls and the robes. And once we have the final highlight, that will have it looking quite a bit different to the rest of the colours. So just use new Shabti Bone here. And you can lighten this and get on to the next highlight. So now we're going to add some white to the new Shabti Bone. I'm just going to highlight the upper edges on the skeleton. So any little ridges, sort of around the eyes, the nose. Highlight each of the individual teeth as well. The top edges of the ribs and the finger bones and the arm bones. Just to make that really stand out and bring out the detail on the skeleton. When you've finished all of the bones, we'll move on to the next colour. So we're going to start with Citadel Deepkin Flesh mixed with Citadel Rakarth Flesh. I'm going to use this to do the scrolls and the parchments on the purity seals. So there is quite a few of these on the model. He's got them coming out of his hips. Little one on the front, one wrapped quite a bit around his wrist, and then loads on the shield too. So I'm going to make sure all of these are done with the Deepkin Flesh and Rakarth mix. And already you can see the difference in the colour of that compared to the bones. So it has a slightly cooler look to it. Or a colder look to it because there's a hint of blue in the Rakarth flesh. Now I'm going to add a little bit more deepkin flesh to it. I'm going to do a further highlight to the scrolls. Once we've finished all the scrolls, you can move on to the robes. Now I'm going to be using Citadel Rakarth Flesh mixed with Vallejo White. This is how we're going to be doing the robes. We want the robes to be the brightest and the lightest out of all the parts. So while you're highlighting the robes here, you want to be making sure that you're only getting the crests of all those ridges in the robe. Also you want to be highlighting the top edges where there's creases at the top of the robe where it's been pulled in by the belt or under his armour. You want to make sure that you've got some nice highlights there where the light will be catching the robes. So once you have the robes highlighted, we're going to add a little bit more Vallejo white to give it another mix. Just lighten up those colours and then we're going to start doing more highlights on these. Now you can see I'm only doing the very tops of the crests here. It's a lot lighter than the previous one. We're also going to be trying to use it to almost join up a couple of the little strands where there's two thin crests coming down and they kind of merge. You want to do like a little bit of a highlight underneath that as well just so it 
makes that a bit more apparent. You should be able to see that on the back of his robes when it's rotated. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of white to the mix once more. So it's one final highlight here. And you are just doing the top edges and a few little thin lines of colour just to make it really stand out and a little bit brighter. You can see the difference in the colour between the bones, the scrolls and the robes, which is what I was going for. Now I'm going to start working on the belt and the grip of his sword and shield and the holster at the back. So you're going to start applying the Mournfang Brown again, making sure that you're catching all the top edges and the areas where the light will get it and leaving all the shade in the recesses. Although the holster looks very, very flat, you can see when the light catches it, the shade has pooled in a few little ridges or a few little recesses there, I should say. So you do want to be avoiding filling in those recesses and just adding the Mournfang Brown to the crest around there. So next up we're going to be using a little bit of Citadel Rakarth Flesh mixed with the Mournfang Brown. We're going to be using that to do rough edges on the belt and the holster. This is just to look like the leather has been worn and scraped and chafed and give it a kind of rough look. So when you're doing it you don't want to be too smooth with these highlights because it is meant to represent where the, the leather is scuffed. So you would have a rough edge to that. So for example when we're going down the sides of the holster here. I'm doing the brush strokes left to right rather than doing a smooth line straight down. By doing this it gives you that rough edge to make it look like it's been scuffed unevenly all the way down. And we're going to do a final highlight by adding more Rakar flesh to that previous layer. I'm going to do exactly the same, doing the side to side motion down those edges. Getting that rough look to all the areas that be scuffed. On the leather. Let's do a little bit of thin cross hatching on that middle part there just to show a bit of scuffing. Now we're going to move on to the purity seals, the wax parts. So we're going to return to corn red. I'm going to start adding that back to the purity seals. There's a couple of them that's got really tiny skulls on there, so you do want to be careful when you're highlighting them. I'm using an Army Painter Wargamer character brush to add the details to it. So once you've given them a nice smooth coat of corn red, then we can move on to the next colour. So the first highlight we're going to do is using a little bit of Citadel Wasdaka Red. What you want to be trying to do here is making sure that you get the Wasdaka Red on quite a few of the areas where you've just put the corn red, but mainly on the top surfaces of everything where the light's going to be catching them. So you don't want to be covering up all of the corn red, just the edges to highlight, the top edges. I'm just going to use a little bit of white mixed with the Wasdaka Red. I'm going to do one final highlight, and this is just going to be a really small amount of this on the top edges of the details on each of the seals. It's a very, very quick layer. Just adding a few little details to that. And once you put this highlight on, the seals will all be finished. So now we're going to return to the flesh. So we're going to go back onto Vallejo Flesh Base. As I said earlier, if you want to use Citadel Cadian Flesh Tone or Kislev Flesh or Burnt Umber by Vallejo or whatever colour you're using for skin, just carry on with that skin colour and start reapplying the first layer again. Now we're going to add a little bit of white to the flesh base and we're just going to do one little highlight on the skin. Now there's a really, really tiny bit 
with skin showing on this it's probably a lot easier to paint without the shield being there as well that's a bit of a pain in the way there but you can just about get it now we're going to be using just plain white and we're going to do his eyes so you want to get a tiny bit of white on the brush and then you're going to be dragging the brush away from its point going sideways across the eye because the eye is slightly longer than it is taller it's easy to go from one side to the other so you're dragging the brush down across the length of the eye on each side until you've got the white on both of them now i'm just going to use a tiny little bit of vallejo black just to put a black spot in each eye as always if you get the spot in the wrong place just put the white back on and put the spot in again slightly too much black on that one so i'm just going to use a tiny little bit of white to touch that up like so now we're going to move on to Citadel Fulgurite Copper. I'm going to reapply this to the little case on his waist here and also on the halo around the skeleton's head. I do like what they've done with that halo. It does look very kind of biblical in some of the illuminations, the pictures and stuff like that and various kind of, I suppose, holy books. But I do really like the look of that on the shield. I think it's pretty cool. Dead good design. Can't help feel that the skeleton will be getting shot to pieces in the first battle though. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Rune Lord Brass. I'm going to start reapplying some of this colour. Now because of the way the shade is with this you don't want to be going over all the shade so I'm mainly doing it around the edges. Because I do like that shade colour because it's got the gloss you can see the Rune Lord Brass from underneath. And you can also see the deepness that comes from that Cryptek Armour shade. Really do like the new shades and new metallics that they brought out, so if you get a chance, pick them up. I'm sure they'll have a million uses in videos to come on new miniatures. They will be really, really handy on these new Necrons. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Canoptec Alloy, which is the new Citadel paint, or one of the new Citadel paints. I'm just going to use this to highlight the areas that we just reapplied the Rune Lord Brass. So it's mainly a kind of edge highlight. Again, it's another really nice colour and the three of them do work really, really well together. I'm a massive fan of shades and I really do like this new shade. So once you've reapplied that onto the edges that you've just highlighted with the Rune Lord brass, then we can move on to the next one. So now we're going to use a little bit more of the Black Templar contrast paint. I'm just going to reapply some of this to the areas we applied it to before and that's just to darken them up just a little bit more so they're a little bit more like they are on the games workshop pictures again the awesome thing about this is when you put the contrast on it sinks into the recesses as this guy is pretty much dead for me it gives enough detail and you can see enough of the color showing through that on the highlighted edges and things that i'm just going to leave it probably as is for the black parts rather than adding metallic highlights or anything like that now, I'm just going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Warpstone Glow. Now, I do want the Necron to look like he's well and truly kaput. So, I'm just going to use this in a single layer on his eyes. Because it's quite dark where his eyes are, it means the Warpstone Glow will be quite dark because it seems to be quite a thin paint. And that will just give it the look that the eyes are green, but they're no longer bright and shining. They are just a dull kind of I don't know, green bulb or what have you. So, we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome. And we're just going to use this to do the piston areas on each of the Necrons. So you've got these little bits on his arms, you'd have them on his legs as well. There's also one on each side of his neck. You'd want them to be pretty clean. we we'll also do the symbol on his chest. But you want the piston to be pretty clean. As, as the Necron will be moving around, the piston will be cleaning off those struts. So now using some Vallejo Black. We're going to start off by using this on the test tube which is hanging behind the shield there because he's a blood angel successor i'm going to do that as though it's got blood inside it because they do seem quite intent on carrying a little bit with them maybe just in case it gets peckish and then then the next section of the video is going to be reapplying the black to all of the armor trim and his helmet and all the 
sections between the armour plate. So rather than doing that as two separate sections when you paint it, you can just keep all the black and do that together. Now we're going to use some Citadel element of Fist on Red. I'm going to start working on this test tube. So you want to choose the level that you want to put the blood into, or the colour that you're filling it with, and just apply the first layer of that. So whatever colour you choose to put onto this test tube, you do it in the same way, by applying the first base colour like that, and then if you follow the steps, as is, so if you're doing a blue, you do a blue, then you'd add the white, then you'd add the white to highlight. If you're doing a green, it'd be the same kind of thing. But on this, we're going to mix some Vallejo white with the red, and we're going to apply the first highlight. So what I try and do is do like a crescent shape on one side of it, of this lighter colour, and a little line across the very top of the liquid. And then do the crescent shape in the same place on the opposite side, so that you can join up those two crescents around the side there, like so. Now I'm going to mix a little bit more white with the previous mix. I'm going to do a slightly smaller crescent on that bottom part there. Unfortunately that's just out of shot. We should see it when I lift the figure up in a moment. Or not. Okay, so that's some really bad camera work. All we're doing here is we're adding a slightly smaller crescent over the one that we've just put on. Hopefully you should be able to see it. Here we go. Like so. So you can still see the original crescent and this is just covering maybe about two thirds of it. Now we've mixed a little bit more white to the previous mix. I'm just going to do a slightly smaller crescent again. Clearly we'll be doing that just out of shot. But you want to be doing about half of the previous crescent with this new layer and then adding a little thin line to the top of the liquid again. And now we're just going to use some pure white. And we're going to do a little crescent at the bottom, a little tiny crescent. And I'm going to do some vertical lines. So it's reflections on the glass. Like so. I'm going to do the same on this side too. Apologies for this, this is quite some shocking camera work here. Clearly concentrating on the test tube too much and not enough on the camera. But I'll link up a video of how to paint glass bottles. And it's exactly the same technique on that, so I'll link that up here. So now we're going to use Vallejo German Grey, and we're going back onto the black trim of the armour. You want to be highlighting all the upper surfaces with some of this German Grey. And also, slightly down from these upper surfaces, I'm going to do a little bit of highlighting on the vertical too. Not too much because it wouldn't be getting too much light, but you do want to get a bit of a highlight on the front of the shield so it's just not plain black all the way down. Like so. So we do it to about that far down on each of the sections. That'll just give the trim of the shield a bit of colour. Now we're going to use some Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey. And this is going to be to do the very top edges and some of the side corners just to make them stand out a little bit more you see here I tend to use the side of the brush when I'm painting this on so you wipe off the excess and just use the side of the brush where the paint is and just drag that down kind of a 45 degree angle to the corner that you're putting the highlight on that works quite well. We've also added the Mechanica Standard Grey back to the stone at the bottom there. We're now using Citadel Dawnstone to highlight that. I'm just giving this a light dry brush with an old brush just to apply that Dawnstone and bring the colour back out again. 
So if the base I've done it Mechanica standard grey, it's been washed with null oil. And then we're reapplying Dawnstone to it now. Now we're actually using a bit of Vallejo white here, although I don't tell you. I'm just going to lightly dry brush that on the edges. You don't want to cover half as much of the area as you have done with the Dawnstone. So it's just, just the edges as much as possible or any of the little ridges. This is actually a really old Citadel medium layer brush that I'm using here where the point's well and truly gone. I tend to use the older brushes for either applying shades or just dry brushing on some of the areas that you want to dry brush like bases and things like that. I do think it is a waste to just get rid of them once they've had the point gone. You can still use them for plenty of things. So now I'm just going to add a little bit more Citadel Null Oil to his sword. I'm just going to try and darken this up a bit so it's not quite as bright. So after carefully applying it there, I decided to lash a little bit more on there, just to darken it up a bit. Now we're doing the underside of the sword here. Let's give that a little bit of a look as though it's in the shade and do a slight little bit of discoloration on the top there. Add a little bit more to here as well. Like so. so. Now we're working on the sand timer. I'm going to start by using a little bit of Araman blue and a little bit of white mixed together just to lighten that up. This is mainly because I haven't got the shade that I wanted to do the top part of the hourglass. But it's kind of a nice pale blue that we're doing it. So if you have a colour which is similar to this then you can crack on with that. Or mix a little bit of white with the Araman blue and just bring that so it's a nice light shade of blue. So once you've got that down, we're going to add a little bit of white to the previous mix. We're just going to go up one side of it and around to the middle. And just lighten that up so you've got dark edges to each side of it with the initial colour. Slightly thicker on one side. You want to try and get those lines not straight down from the top to the bottom, but in a curve so it looks like the light on the glass is curved a little bit. Now we're going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix. I'm just going to lighter the centre of the area that we've just painted. Like so. Now we're going to use a little bit of Zandri dust and mix a little bit of white in there with it. Same thing again. Didn't really have a colour that I wanted to do it, so I mixed a little bit of white with the Zandri dust. And we're just going to paint that on there in the same way that we did with the blue. Basically we're going to be doing exactly the same thing that we have just done with the top half of the hourglass. Using a little bit more white in a moment to add that to it. And then doing the same kind of highlight that we've just done. So it covers a slightly, about half of the surface of the hourglass but shifted to one side with the edges curved rather than straight down. And this just gives the impression of light reflecting on the front of the glass. And lightening up the contents a little. I'm going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix. And just give one final highlight to the bottom half of the hourglass. Like so. And we're just going to use a bit of the previous mix just to smooth off the bottom edge because it left that quite rough there. Looked a little bit shabby. Now I'm going to use Araman Blue. I'm going to use this just to do the little power stud kind of thing on the blade here. I'm going to do a few little thin sparkles of electricity coming off that. There's lots of different ways you can do power swords. You can do it with the blue and white blade. Or you can do it like they've started doing some of them here with like the little tiny bits of kind of electricity or power coming off this little bit. Or you can do them where you've got the lightning going up the blade on a black blade or on a silver blade. So if you want to see a few different kinds of how to do the blades like that, just let me know. I can do a few of those. So now I'm going to mix a little bit of white with the Ironman blue. And we're just going to add this highlight, leaving some of the Ironman blue on display.
like so. I'm going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix. Like that. Now I'm going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix. We're just going to do another little highlight on these sections. If you do happen to join one of these little sections up with the little nodule in the middle there, so that you've just got the lighter colour going from the little lightning bit to the centre, we can just use a tiny little bit of Citadel Drachenhof Nightshade to put a little dark area around that little nodule bit. At the moment we're just using pure white to highlight all the little sections on here. So we get it going from the dark blue to the light. Of course if you wanted to do it a lot smoother you could use a lot more shades on this, but four layers should do it. So here we're going to use a little bit of Drachenhof Nightshade just to go around the stud. And that gives it its dark edge back again without losing any of the detail that you've just put on there with the different blue shades like so it's a very quick and easy way of doing the little power button thing so now we're going to use a little tiny bit of Citadel Agrax Earth Shade and we're just going to put some Agrax Earth Shade around the rocks on the base here just to give that a bit of a dirty and grimy look Like so. I'm going to do the similar kind of thing, but this time using Citadel Athonian Camo Shade. You can see that the Agrax Air Shade's still a bit wet there. It doesn't really matter too much if the Athonian Camo Shade mixes with the Agrax Air Shade. Actually, looks quite good sometimes when you get the two to mix. Looks like when you see kind of like long standing dirty puddles, you've got the kind of algae stuff growing in it, it tints it a sort of browny green. So if they mix a little bit, don't worry about it too much. Now I'm going to use a little tiny bit of Citadel Retributor Armour. I'm going to use this to do the shell casings on the floor there. So just keep each of them a good coat of Retributor Armour. I'm going to paint these up in exactly the same way that we did the gold earlier. I'm doing these separately because I wanted to get the base done, because otherwise you try and do the base and your dry brush, you're going to cover those little shells in the dry brushing colour. So a little tiny bit of a Grax Air Shade, we're going to wash each of those shells on the floor, the casings. Now we're going to reapply a little bit of Liberator Gold here. And there should be Retributor Armour underneath this, I swear. So I've probably missed out a little bit of video here. So if you want to do a little bit of Retributor Armour and then the Liberator Gold, that's fine. If you just put the Liberator Gold on, that'll be fine as well. It won't really matter too much because you can still see the Retributor Armour underneath the Agrax Air Shade. I've mixed a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome with the Liberator Gold and we're just going to do one final highlight on each of these casings. Now we're going to use Vallejo Black and also Citadel Mephiston on Red. We're just going to start adding all the text and images to the scroll work. Now there's bags of this on him so you can really play around it if you want to. Practice doing different styles, different patterns, different images, whatever you want to do. If you're interested in different styles of scroll work and things like that you can do. I've linked in the video to the one that I did for Saint Celestine. It's a video just showing all the different things that I'm putting onto the scroll work with her. So worth having a watch, you can see a few little things from doing a little bit of test to different symbols to whatever you want to do there and some little daft pictures on there too. 
I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo Black. I'm going to start doing some heraldry on this little shield here. Now there's going to be a few little sections on this, each doing different things. So I'm doing a little black circle here. I'm going to put a bit of my fist on red in to do a teardrop. That's going to be because he is the 10th company captain. Now we're going to use some Avalanche Sunset. I'm just making up some patterns as I go along here. So I thought a nice little yellow band going across. I'll use a few little different colours to break up the red of that shield. Do some stripes on it, a few little teardrops, that kind of thing. So I started doing two teeth here. Didn't like the idea once I started them, so I changed it into two Rakar flesh stripes. You can see them there. Adding a little bit more Avalon Sunset just to smooth off that yellow there. I'm going to play around doing a few little more patterns. If you'd like to see a video of different things of you can do as the heraldry, just let me know. I'm reapplying that teardrop there because I've expanded the circle so it's a bit bigger. Made it properly round and then redoing the teardrop shape so it's a proper teardrop. And now what you can't see really well is I'm adding small checks to the Avalon Sunset band there. So we're just going to have a little section of checks. Now I'm just going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Uriel Yellow. I'm just going to add that to the yellow stripe going across here. Just to give that a bit more of a colour so it's not just one plain band going across a shaded red area. And just add the highlights roughly along the same area. Now we're going to use Vallejo Black. I'm just going to start working on the chapter icon here. Now I've started doing the Knights of the Chalice chapter icon on this one. Realised that it's slightly obscured by his backpack. So I'm going to be doing a separate video for that on Sunday. How to do their chapter badge. As usual, it's just a case of applying the image in the black and then using a bit of Citadel Mephist on red and also a bit of the Evil Sun Scarlet just to touch that up where it's gone slightly astray or slightly in the wrong place. So you can put on the rough shape of the chalice and then just touch that up with the reds. like so. And that is the finished Knight of the Chalice Captain. As I say, it's a superb model, really impressed with the Indomitus box. And the guys of the shields are no disappointment. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much.